Most designers are using the wrong tool for the job, but not every design tool set is built equally. Some are built for speed, others are built for full creative capabilities, and others are built for AI first. So which one is right for you? Well, in this video, I wanna break down three different types of design tools that I think you can focus on. First, we're gonna take a look at AI builders. Next, we're gonna take a look at big CMS type builders. And then we're gonna take a look at full creativity builders. So ones that are fully fledged for designers only. So let's take a look at our first one here, which is going to be durable.co. Now this starts us off at the AI first type of websites. In the hero header, we have AI that builds a website for you. You type in your business idea. So for example, a landing page for cats, and it's going to ask me to sign up and do all that. But we can imagine if we generate the website, it's actually going to create this site for us. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just say cat co, okay? And then it's gonna generate the website for us based on a few templates that it might have. So let's take a look at the results that it's gonna give us here. So here we have our hero header, reliable cat care solutions in Girona, and a couple of tabs that we can add, perfect tailored designs. So the captions are actually perfect. They look really good. But when we take a look at, yeah, here it's asking us to sign up. But when we take a look at the actual layouts, they are pretty simple. And that's a common theme that we're gonna see with these AI generated templates. In this case, we have some other templates generated by Durable. We can see that they're all pretty standard when it comes to the layout. It's just some grids, a couple of images here and there, but in, in many cases, that's all you really need. So keep in mind that this is a pretty solid way to get started. A similar but much better way to build sites with AI, in my opinion, is gonna be the Reloom site generator. So we can do the same thing, so a cat company, whatever that means, generate it. And then what it's gonna do is actually generate a wireframe for us first with all the different sections and a couple of different pages that it thinks. And then from there, we can go on to wireframing and generate an entire website wireframe and the actual sections, the tabs, the contact forms, everything it needs. And the text is also gonna be pretty good. And of course we can just make this as, I mean, I literally wrote a three word sentence, it's not gonna be the most perfect thing in the world, but you can see that this is gonna be pretty good for most, the majority of people that just want like a quick website, get it out. That is what I think where AI comes in handy is when you need to get something out quickly and you just need a good starting point this is gonna be a good way to, to get started with that. But what if you're a designer and you're working with a big team already, or you have a large CMS, which is the best option? Well, that leads us on to our next two. Number one is gonna be Webflow, which is one of my favorite tools in the world. And then the second one is gonna be a little bit surprising, but we'll get on that in a second. So the first one, Webflow, we can see that it's a lot more advanced and actually the previous one, Reloom, works within Webflow. So Webflow is kind of a branch of many different products that you can use. So we're gonna go into platform and then click on manage CMS. And you can see that they're already trying to target CMS as the very first thing. And this is where I think Webflow does a great job. It's with very large sites, lots of interlinking pages, lots of different people involved with a website. We have editor mode, we have different people that need to have access. We have, for example, if you have someone who's only doing the blogs for your company, well, then you can give them that title and then all they have access to is the blogs and they can't mess any of the design up. We have ways to organize all the content. We can add in custom search experiences. We can do basically anything that we want within Webflow, which is amazing. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's so well connected for the enterprise people, the large teams, people that really just need a, a solid, solid CMS or people that are coming straight from code and want to just get rid of a little bit of code in their life. They want to go a little bit more no code. Webflow Flow is a very good option along with the next one, which I think is going to be a surprise to a lot of people. It's going to be Wix Studio. So when I first did a review of Wix Studio in a couple of videos ago, I was really surprised with the CMS capabilities that it had. And that's why I'm including it in this list because I think the CMS capabilities is one of the major pros of Wix Studio. So I think it's comparable to Webflow when it comes to the CMS capabilities, and it's usually undermined as a website builder, but I think it has a pretty good use case for a large CMS collection. If you need to have a large team and you want to have different people involved and one person needs to access the editor, another person needs to access the blogs and all that different kind of stuff, very similar to the Webflow workflow, then I think it's gonna be pretty good. And you also have this headless CMS that you can add 
which is amazing. But all in all, if you need a site that has that capability where you have different roles and permissions in a large team and you want to have just simple animations built in and just get launched quickly, then Wix Studio is honestly a decent way to go because there's a lot of things that are out of the box that will work well, and then you can go above and beyond as well. So you don't have to start from zero and then you can go above and beyond. So Wix Studio is a great way to kind of get started with that. All right, then we have our final third tier, which is going to be for designers first. This is where I think my favorite type of builders are because I'm a designer. And so this is more friendly to people like me that didn't learn development. They're just kind of designing and want to publish that design. This is where I think Framer comes in and also our number two option, which is gonna come in later in this video. But Framer allows you to do basically what you have in Figma, which is just design the website and then publish it. But the difference within Figma is that Framer is launching updates like it's nobody's business. They recently just had a spring events update and they launched the Wireframer similar to the Reloom Builder that we talked about in this video. If we click on the spring updates, we'll see that they have the Wireframer. We can do vectors now, workshop, advanced analytics. So it really is expanding and it's a great tool to keep your eye on if you're a designer first. They also have a lot of different fonts. They have so many different ways that you can build in. The templates are absolutely insane as well. So let's click on this one. I mean, the, the websites that you can build with Framer are great as well. And just because it's for designers doesn't mean that it's limited right now. I mean, it used to be when it first launched that it was incomparable to the other designer tools because it was super new and there weren't that many features. But now it's a couple of years in and it's honestly a rival tool to Webflow, to Wix Studio, to any of these kind of larger companies. So keep an eye out on Framer if you're a designer and you want that familiarity coming from Figma and you have that blank canvas, this is where you want to be. Similarly, if you're coming from Figma, you might also be considering Figma sites. This is a recent thing they just published a couple weeks ago. So you have Figma. Now you can launch a site inside of Figma, very similar to Framer, which is that you have these three different breakpoints, just like Framer. You edit one, it cascades down to the other three. You can see the entire thing as you would normally with Figma anyways. And so now we can see that there is going to be a rivalry between Framer and Figma sites. And I think this is a good thing for most designers because now this is going to incentivize more competition between Framer and Figma. People are going to be trying to push things faster, more templates, more updates, more plugins, everything. And so this is a very new tool. It doesn't have advanced analytics. It doesn't have crazy CMS stuff. It doesn't have any of the things that Framer has been building and doing a lot of work in the last couple of years. But I mean, this is a multi-billion dollar company that can have those capabilities and probably will in the upcoming weeks, months, years. So I mean, yeah, coming soon, AI or code. I mean, yeah, they're, they're coming, right? So keep an eye out with Figma, but for now it's a little bit less advanced. It doesn't have insane CMS capabilities. I'm sure it will. They have CMS as I can see right there, but keep in mind that this is a very new tool. So don't expect the most incredible website performance and all that. I mean, it's going to be a mess with all the divs and all that anyways, but just keep in mind it's a new tool. So that kind of concludes our three different categories. We have AI first, large CMS and teams, and then we have designer first. Let me know which category you think you fall into. Most of my subscribers probably are designers in the mid to junior range. So you probably are going to go with Framer to Figma maybe. And if you're in the team, then you may be going into the other ones. But anyways, let me know which you think you fall into in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.